It's time for another Q&A, Work Besties. Questions asked by you, answered by me. I'm just pulling them up now. I haven't seen them before this, so we're gonna go through them together and get to know each other a little bit more. I guess you'll get to know me a little bit more. Unfortunately, I can't hear you through a screen, um, but here we go. Let's get right into it, all right? Would you take a pay cut for jobs that have more unknown, but potentially more growth? That is such a personal question. I think it kind of just depends what you're prioritizing at this season of life. So like, I don't have an answer. I don't have one solid answer that would be consistent through my whole life because I just feel like it's different. But right now, would I take a pay cut for a job with more unknown, but potentially more growth? Define growth. Like growth monetary or growth personally or growth skill-wise. Next question. Advice for someone looking to switch careers but terrified to start over. The scariest thing to do is to just take the leap. It gets so much easier after that. I have massively changed my career within the last five years and the most terrifying part was committing to the decision to do it. And after that, it was like a lot more easy to adjust to. So. I would just say, you know, give yourself grace, understand that, yeah, it is terrifying, but if it's something that you know you want, you're allowed to be scared while you're excited and just, just go for it. I mean, I think oftentimes people get stuck in this, oh, I'll do that later, I still have time. But if you know you want something, why not just do it now, you know? That's, that's my advice, I guess. Your lipstick shade, please. I get asked this all the time and I don't know how to respond because I just wear like a clear lip mask. I think it's just the pigment of my lips with a clear gloss on top that people ask about all the time. And so it's just, it's just a lip mask. I don't have any pigment on my lips. Yeah, like I don't have anything on them right now except a lip mask. Can you see my lips? I don't, that's, this is just the pigment on my lips. Where do I see myself in five years? I have no idea. I do not plan that far out. All I know is I don't wanna be doing the same thing that I'm doing now in five years because I don't wanna do anything long-term. Like I don't wanna be in the same position I am today. Not that it's a bad position or anything, but I just, I love to change and grow and evolve and do different things. And so the only thing I know for certain is probably not what I'm doing right now. Do you work in IT? I don't anymore, but I used to. Any thoughts about LinkedIn? I recently started getting back on LinkedIn. I actually, fun fact, fun story. I stopped LinkedIn when social media started to pick up for me because I had a lot of people going to my LinkedIn page, finding my employers, finding my managers. And I was like, you know, out of a respect and privacy thing for the people that I was working with, I deleted it because I was like, I just, I, I don't know how to navigate this. All I know is I don't want other people's privacy to get infiltrated and I just deleted it. But recently I've been starting to get back on there and it's just a whole other, it's a whole, it's so different than any other, any other social media platform. So I'd say I'm like starting to relearn it, I guess. So I don't have any concrete thoughts on it. Do you eat sugar like in cakes or chocolate? Yes. Best advice for college students. Oh, I remember being in, in university. I would say you don't need to figure out what you wanna do. And at least for me, I didn't even understand like 2% of the jobs that were actually available. As someone who went into business school, we were basically told there's finance, there's accounting, there's marketing, and there's HR. Like that's kind of what we learned about. There are so many roles so well beyond that and things that you just don't even realize exist as a job until you're actually in industries. So I would say don't put so much pressure on yourself to know exactly the role or position or whatever you wanna do. Know your general interests and then be open to, you know, getting kind of navigated into a role that suits you. Um, I think there's just so much pressure to know exactly what you wanna do coming out of school and have a job and whatnot, but you probably don't even know half the jobs that exist out there and there's probably so many for you that you could like. So continue to be open-minded, enjoy the experience. I mean, I, I did not enjoy university whatsoever, but I will say it goes by so fast. So enjoy it while you're in it as much as you can. Experience it to its full potential because it's gonna be behind you so fast. The best things I learned in school were skills like time management, organization, you know, and it wasn't the courses and the content that I really got a lot out of. It was more, you know, living on my own, managing my time, managing my workload, coming up with tools and organization and all of that. So 
that's what I got out of school and I really lean into it. So maybe do that as well. I don't know. Why are your dogs so skinny? They are whippets and they are meant to be very lean. They are not malnourished. If you know anything about sight hounds, greyhounds, whippets, Italian greyhounds, all of that, you're meant to see like a couple ribs or spine. They're, they're very lean dogs. It's very unhealthy for them to be overweight. Um, and so that is why they are thin. It's just the breed. I get asked that quite a bit. Any pre big decision rituals or habits or how to's before I make a big decision, I give myself time not a ton, but time to sit on it, basically a night. If I wake up the next morning and I still want that, I just do it. I also feel like the more I get to know myself and continue to discover who I am, what I believe in, who I really am at my core, it becomes easier or I go into making big decisions a lot more confidently because I know it's what I want. And so I would say self-discovery has helped me a lot in those big decisions because it's helped my confidence and it just helps me get to know myself better. Um, but I always give myself just a little bit of buffer to think on big decisions. I am someone who, you know, if it's a financial decision, I kind of write out on the numbers and make sure that the math makes sense. Um, but I would say as I've gotten older and I've gotten to know myself more, big decisions aren't as scary because I know what I want and it doesn't take, it doesn't take a lot of second guessing for me to just be like, yes, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. I own it. I'm also not someone that seeks approval from other people. And I feel like the people in my life, I know that, that really rely on other people's approval. It's a lot harder for them to make decisions. I don't struggle with that because the only person's approval I really need is myself when I'm making big decisions. So I would say if you're someone who really relies on the opinions or approvals of others, maybe check in with that as you're making big decisions as well. Are you not making this decision because it's not what you want or it's not what you know your parents want or your partner wants or you know a friend wants or whoever you seek that approval from um, would be a good check-in point. How do you professionally say it in corporate, please stop randomly calling me on Teams because I'm sick? I would just write back to the person and say, hey, okay, first of all, no, no, no. If you're sick, why are you working? Okay, so say you have to work and you're sick. Fine. I would probably write back to the person on Teams and be like, hey, I'm not able to, I'm not able to pick up your call right now. I, I probably wouldn't even tell them that I'm sick because what business is that of theirs? Can you please communicate this through email or through message and kind of like divert it to something else? And then if they're like, no, it's urgent, I need to call you, say you're unavailable today, ask if they can schedule a meeting kind of later in the week, be like, hey, does you know, Thursday at two o'clock work to touch base on this? That's what I would do. You seem to be a positive person. What thoughts you rely on when feeling negative? I am, I'm not always a positive person. And I, I think that there's, you know, a part of social media that for me, at least when I'm not feeling super positive, it's not really a place I like to show up in because I more like to disconnect from the world, especially the online world when I'm not super, super happy. And I, I want to be mindful of not putting out a ton of negativity because then it kind of adds potentially to other people's negativity. So I, I wouldn't say I'm always a positive person, but perhaps that's the perception that maybe you have, um, online of me, which thank you, I guess. When I'm not feeling so good, my first reminder is kind of to come back to the basics. So I truly am like, am I nourishing my body? Am I eating good foods? Am I getting some movement in? Am I checking in with my mind? Have I meditated? Have Do I have a clean space? Like my environment really impacts me. Um, how have I been spending my time lately? I kind of come back to just like the basics of taking care of myself and focusing really heavily on those. And I find that through doing that, it helps me kind of get out of this negative state, but also being in a negative state, I feel like it's just part of being human. So it's not so much trying to change it. It's just trying to like move through it as long as it's going to stay there. <laughs> that makes any sense. But that's kind of what, what I lean on when I'm not feeling so hot. Does your dad have an Instagram? He's hilarious. <laughs> he does have an Instagram and it's really, it's really wholesome because anytime we travel together or whatnot, or he comes to visit sometimes, he'll just be like out with his phone, taking photos for his Instagram. Um, I'm not going to share it cause I don't want him to get too overwhelmed, but he has, he has like a classic dad Instagram and I love it so much. So he does. When are you bringing back Brenda and the team? Very soon. I, to be honest, it, it takes a lot more time to kind of sit down and script out a bunch of episodes and make sure that they have sort of some consistency to them. And so it's on my list of things to get back to. I've been slammed the last couple months, so I haven't really had the time or space to write 
scripts for all the characters, but they are coming back. I also lost a couple wigs in the process and then found them because I, I moved and so, but they're back, don't worry, they're all back. So that's hopefully coming pretty soon and I'm gonna try to get some longer format um, skits for them too so I have a little bit more time to play with them. So stay tuned for that, I'm really excited about it. What happened with Brenda and Ned? We're gonna find out. I've got some uh, cheeky ideas about that one. What's a mistake you've made at work? Oh, I'm sure plenty. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so we have Toodaloo mugs that, you know, some merch stuff that we sold there over there. And there was one round of them that <laughs> It's funny now, but basically myself, my team, my design team, we all were looking at this mug. We approved it. None of us noticed the massive typo on the mug through the whole process until the finals. So we've already produced like hundreds of them. The finals get to me and I'm sitting one day in the morning and I'm reading this message on the mug and I'm like, why does that look funny to me all of a sudden? And then I realized that there was a massive typo on it uh, but it was too late and you know what the funniest thing about that was is they sold out so fast because people were like that's the most relatable thing ever and I was like that that's funny so that was like a more recent ish mistake that at the time was like oh my lanta and then we were like okay the mistake happened how do we work through this and we resolved it and it was fine and that was I guess that was one but I know early on in my career is plenty plenty of mistakes how can you work motivated for eight hours a day I lose my focus really quickly I don't work for eight hours productively a day if I'm being honest I actually structure with my team more to have like six hour work days because I just don't believe that you can create or humans can create consistent good output for eight hours consistently in a day especially if you're working in like a creative field uh, so I don't and I try to do my like less focus tasks the more boring things towards the end of the day when I'm starting to lose focus I've kind of mapped out in my days when I'm the most creative when I'm the most energetic when I'm the most detail oriented and I I schedule my days and tasks accordingly yeah the eight hour workday I personally feel like is so outdated and I can't wait until the day where that's just not the norm anymore I mean every day is different sure I've had some eight hour days where I've been productive the whole day or probably hyper focused but there's also days where I have like an hour or two of motivation in me and the rest is just like a write-off so I just try to fill it in with like mindless tasks and whatnot so you're not alone in that losing your your focus really quickly favorite u.s state to visit i've only visited a handful of them i really like california so i'm gonna go california i actually haven't visited too many of them now that i'm like thinking about it i want to get out to utah i want to get back to hawaii oh i really liked vermont love vermont but it's the season of the sticks and i yeah, really liked Vermont. I would say Vermont and California are my top two that I've been to, but again, I have not been to many. Wow, there are so many questions. This is lovely. How did you become so confident? I just spent years learning myself and getting to know myself. I, I've spent years being miserable and having a really, really hard time, and it kind of catapulted me into this like self-discovery journey years back, and that had night and day change my confidence in myself. It just simply getting to know myself, spending time with myself, that self-exploration, like it just did wonders for me. And so I kind of continue doing that and trying to keep learning more about myself and through every season of life. How do you speak about a layoff in an interview? I have not personally had to do this. Let me just start with that. But I don't see like you being laid off was out of your control. And so I, I don't think it should be the most interesting part about your interview. And I would say if the person interviewing you is going to judge you because you were laid off, it's probably not a place or environment or culture you want to work in anyways, but you can only control so much. And I would more focus on that within an interview. But I also know that there's so many different emotions that come with being laid off and I have not experienced them myself. I've just been able to have discussions with people who have from what i can understand it's a lot to go through emotionally and it plays with you mentally quite a bit i'm probably not the person or the best person to ask about that but i just 
more like to focus on the things I can control versus the things that were just out of my control. Will you plan a big or a small wedding? You remembered that I'm getting married. I'm actually thinking about starting the wedding planning in the next year. I know it's, it's been like, I've been engaged for four years. No, three years. I don't know. I've been engaged for a little while and uh, just didn't really care to plan a wedding, but I'm thinking maybe, maybe I'll start this year and like guest list wise, probably on the smaller end, but like, it's not going to be small. I don't know. It's going to be, we'll see. I, I really don't know. I haven't started planning it. I'm thinking of forehead Botox. How has your experience been so far? I have done Botox and I've done Dysport, same kind of idea. My experience has been positive. I've only been to very fantastic injectors. I, I think if you go to an injector that you can communicate exactly what you're looking for, because not everyone wants to be completely frozen, like I like to keep a ton of movement, finding the right injector, you'll have a positive experience. I would ask yourself why you wanna get the Botox, and this was a big thing for me before I started, because I didn't wanna get it from a place of self-hatred of like, I hate myself, I need to change myself. I wanted to make sure it was from a place of, I don't hate myself, I like the way I look. There's just things that I would like to, you know, improve upon or change. Like for me, it was, I have a really expressive face and I love that, but it was getting to a point where I just, I was creasing so much in my forehead that they were coming, becoming permanent lines, which is nothing wrong with, I just personally didn't want them and my makeup was getting stuck in them. And so I just wanted to have a little bit less movement so it wouldn't create these big creases enough that I could still express my face. So I, I think you just have to go to someone who's willing to listen to what you want and give you what you want. And uh, I, I've had positive experience so far. How do you struggle with stress and anxiety in your job? That's a good one to ask me now because I'm definitely stressed at work. I think for me, it's important to have an end of stress insight. So for me, I know I have time off coming up where I'm completely disconnecting. It has an end to the stress, if that makes sense. So it doesn't seem as like overwhelming or all life encompassing as it would if I just, the end was not in sight. I think also too, I always come back to this idea of one thing at a time, instead of trying to do absolutely everything on your to-do list all at once, every single day, it's like, just focus on one thing at a time. And then the workload kind of starts to get worked through. I'm also big at scheduling. So when I look at my schedules every week, I plan things for how I'm going to feel almost. Like I know if I have a really, really overwhelming Tuesday, let's say, I'm probably not gonna stack my Wednesday a ton with things I have to get done and give myself a little bit more space that week. Or if I know I am gonna feel energized one week because I had a really a relaxing weekend, then maybe I can stack things up a little bit more. So I, I don't just schedule my calendar by like the time available. It's also like the energy I think I'll have available based on everything leading up to it on those days. I love the watch and jewelry you wear. What brand are they? The, my little thin rings are from Too Posh. Uh, my engagement ring I designed with a small business. What? Bread and Circus? Yeah, Bread and Circus. My watch is from Longines. And yeah, that's where they're from. How are you doing in your new place and new part of the country? Good. I think, I mean, I love the house. I love the physical space. I like the area. I'm still very much settling in. I don't, I know one person locally, but not that local. Shout out Alex. I haven't met a lot of people since I've been here and that's probably on me. I'm adjusting. It's, it's going to take a little while. I can feel that, but I'm definitely happy. I moved. I am very much more aligned with this part of the country than I was where I previously lived, at least for where I'm at in life right now. So we'll see, we'll see how it continues to go. How to dodge personal, personal questions at work. Just shut them down, really divert. It, it depends what they're asking you, I guess. I would just almost answer with a question. My therapist taught me this. Usually when people ask you a question, it's because they want the question to be asked to them. Like it's a topic that they want to bring up to speak about themselves and people love speaking about themselves. So if you almost, 
respond with a question and deflect it back to them, you've kind of avoided the question. Or just like hard change topic of conversation. I, I, I need like a specific example, but you don't have to answer anything you're not comfortable with. And I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, I'm not interested in sharing that information with you or it's, I'd rather keep that personal. Why are you opposed to showing us your feet? <laughs> I've just been asked to purchase my used socks one too many times on the internet to feel safe showing my dogs on the online. What are key signs it is time to look for another job? The fact that you're asking that, I, I think you already deep down know the answer to that question. I, cause I've been there. I think if you're constantly thinking about moving on and what else is out there, you've made that decision deep down. You just kind of need to accept it and then come up with a plan. But some key signs would just be, it depends what you prioritize at work. You know, some people really prioritize the money. Some people really prioritize the skill development. Sometimes people really prioritize the people. And I think you kind of need to look at where you're at in life, what you're prioritizing is it. And then when you talk about things like compensation, it's what parts of compensation. Like I remember a time in my career where I was really, really focused on prioritizing paid days off because I was at a point where I really wanted to travel. I wanted to go out and see things. And so that to me was almost more important than like negotiating my salary piece of it. So I think you need to understand what you're wanting in your career. And then almost writing, like what I did was I wrote a list of pros and cons of staying in terms of how they aligned with my prioritization of what I wanted in my job. And it was very clear through writing them out that it was time for me to move on to something else. And so perhaps that'll work for you too. But I think the start is kind of understanding if you want something different, but also the why, like what are you in search of that your current role is not able to provide you with? How tall are you? I am five foot 11. It's like 180 centimeters. I'm tall and I love it. What happened to work bestie? What do you mean? He's still around. Fun fact, he actually works for me now. That's exciting. Work bestie, we're on different time zones now, so we have to coordinate things a little bit more carefully. And so nothing happened to him though. He's, he's, he's still here. He was actually off last week, but, uh, but I think he, he's back today. I usually have a meeting with him later, I think. Favorite thing so far about moving to BC? I would say, compared to Ontario, hikes and trails and everything here are free and they're everywhere and they're not super busy and it's just gorgeous. You can surf within an hour and a half. So cool. Can't do that back where I used to live. Uh, it's just, it's a lot more outdoorsy and that's really what I've been enjoying. The weather, I mean, I'm looking outside right now cause it's snowing and it's supposed to be warmer on this coast than uh, back in Ontario, but it's uh, today is not, but yeah, I've really been just enjoying the nature aspect of it. It's just anyone who's been to BC knows how absolutely gorgeous it is out here. It's my favorite. What made you start making content? It was during the pandemic. To be honest, I was really bored. I was feeling quite lonely because everyone got sent to work from home and it was a new normal. I was trying to adjust to it. And so I started making content more of an outlet for myself to entertain me because no one makes me laugh more than I do. And so I started making videos and then I noticed that people were responding to them and relating to them. And when I started seeing comments of, I thought I was alone in this, or I thought I was the only one experiencing that, that kind of drove me to create the content more to start creating the community. And then the rest is history. So now we're here and I'm super, super happy that I made that decision back then. It's been a lovely journey. What brand of luggage do you recommend for a checked bag? I actually don't have a checked bag. I, I do, it's like an old one, I wouldn't recommend it. I don't have a good checked bag luggage. So you tell me, what's a good checked bag luggage? Because I, I do think I'm gonna need to invest in one very soon. Your hair care routine, your hair is so long. I, this is a terrible answer, but I, I mean, I wash my hair obviously, like once or twice a week. And my hair has always just grown so quickly. So there's nothing super specific. I mean, I do like a scalp oil once a week. I do a hair mask when it's feeling a bit dry. I try not to put a lot of heat on it. I rarely ever like straighten it. Sometimes I'll do a blowout. Uh, like this morning I just showered. I dried my roots because I really don't like wet roots sitting on my hair. And then 
it just dries. I have very fine hair, so my hair tangles really easily. But other than that, I don't know, it just grows really long. I, maybe diet plays into it, I'm not really too sure, but I, I just, my hair's always just grown really quickly. One travel spot you recommend everyone goes to? That is, that's a good question. One travel destination. Oh, it totally depends on what you like in travel. Can I say Canada? BC? Come out to BC. It's gorgeous. I, I think it really, really depends on. If you really like city, Japan was really cool, like Tokyo and Osaka. I, I can't answer that unless you gave me a list of like, these are the things I really enjoy in travel, then I can tell you a place. So more details on that one. Are you coming to Australia? I have no plans, but it's on the list to go back to. So I, I went a couple times when I was younger and uh, I really enjoyed it. So I definitely want to go back. Maybe, maybe, maybe later this year, probably not, but maybe, you never know. Do you travel by yourself? I am so scared to go by myself. I have traveled by myself many times. The first time was definitely the most terrifying. It was also the trips that I feel like I grew the most on and the trips that I did exactly what I wanted to do because I didn't have to keep in account what anyone else wanted to do. And so I would say it's scary, but traveling solo is so powerful. If you can make it work, I would do it. Do you miss Toronto yet? I miss the airport. <laughs> that's, that's the one thing I miss. Pearson, I just, Pearson was a great airport with a lot of, like a really good airport in terms of where you could fly to from it and having really good routes to a lot of places. I do miss that piece of it, absolutely. Work besties catch up in Australia, I mean, I'm probably gonna go look at flights this afternoon because now I'm just curious. No regrets, but if time goes back, what would you do differently and why? I don't think I'd do anything differently because then I, I know confidently that I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Like there, there's nothing looking back that I wish I had done wildly differently. It's also a mindset that I just, I don't really believe having regrets. So nothing, final answer. If I see you out, can I come say hello? Absolutely, you can. Please, please do. Where are you going for your birthday? Should I tell you now or should I just let it be a surprise? I don't think many people would necessarily guess it, but I basically planned a trip for myself. Because here's the thing. When it comes to birthdays, I've always found if you rely on other people to celebrate you, you're nine times out of 10 gonna be met with disappointment. When it comes to birthdays, I like to plan stuff for myself and do exactly what I wanna do and celebrate myself how I wanna be celebrated. And so I planned a trip that is like the most Laura trip you could possibly think of. Every piece of it, every place that we're staying, every activity, it's, it's what I wanna do. You'll have to wait and see. You'll have to wait and see. How you describe happiness. Happiness is when, if my life were to end at any moment now, I would be okay with that because I know that I am living a life so in alignment with what I want and what I believe in and is so true to how I want to live my life that it's like this sense of peace and acceptance of whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen and I don't need to control that. I know that I'm not happy if I think, okay, you know, if this was my last day on earth, would that stress me out? Would I suddenly want to do all these things? Would I change my whole life around? Like that's when I know, okay, this feeling I have inside, it's, it's this misalignment with how my life is going versus how I want to be living my life. That's the best way I can kind of describe that. It's like living so deeply in alignment. And there's like moments of these feelings of, even when nothing really makes sense going on around you, it's this feeling that everything makes sense and it's just this calm and this peace and no matter what happens externally, nothing can rock that. That all encompasses kind of what I believe is happiness. How to get started on a task when you're running on empty? Break it down into very small bite-sized pieces and write them down. Like write the first thing you need to do to get it started and then the next thing. and instead of trying to tackle the whole thing at once, just tackle pieces of it and then they'll pile up, they'll build and before you know it, the task will be done. 
Do you actually go on these bestie trips with your followers? I do, of course. Yes, I'm there. What are your thoughts on unionizing the workplace? I think it's industry specific and it's not like a blanket thing to throw on any job. In some places it works really well, makes a lot of sense, and in other environments it doesn't really make a lot of sense and I think it causes more headaches than anything. So I th it really depends. How do you manage your screen time and your relationship with Instagram? That's a really great question. Hi, Michelle. Probably not as well as I should, if I'm being honest. I definitely find myself not even wanting to be on my phone at certain times when things become a little bit overwhelming, I, especially if there's like a really negative side of the internet that's starting to come out and I'm really getting a lot of exposure to. I would say it's a lot about constantly checking in with myself, but like the moment that I'm starting to get hung up on likes or views and not from the perspective of like, oh, has something changed? I wanna learn more about that, but more tying it to like my self-worth, the phone goes off. Like I need a break from that because I know that that is a sign that mental health ain't doing so hot. So it's a lot of checking in with myself, a lot of boundary setting in terms of how many things I'm reading. Like if, if I'm going through my messages and I'm noticing a lot of negativity or a lot of just really mean comments, it's that boundary of like, I need to put this down and not continue to read these until I'm in a place where this isn't impacting me so much or the negativity is kind of just like subsided because it kind of comes in ebbs and flows I find on social media. So yeah, screen time, I'm not too hung up on the numbers because the reality is some days I just need to be on it more than others. So I don't track it from that perspective, but I do track how much I'm like mindlessly scrolling, track more how it's making me feel when I come off the platform, but I don't have I don't have any sort of groundbreaking thing to share when it comes to that. It's more just checking in with myself. But that's the last question for this Q&A. As always, I appreciate you being here. If there's any other questions that you're curious about, feel free to drop them in the comments, and I'll chat with you soon, work besties. Toodaloo.